So today we're gonna to learn how to activate and deactivate components as well as game objects inside our scene because that is something that you're gonna to have to learn how to know how to know how, how to do at some point when you start creating games inside Unity. In the first example, we're gonna talk about how to deactivate and activate components on our game objects. And this is something that is very useful in case you might want to enable and disable certain features of your game objects. Let's say I have a player and the player has the ability to jump, but let's say I get a debuff during my game that has to take away my jump ability. In that case, I could have a separate script that actually handles jumping attached to my player and I could then deactivate that script when I'm playing during playtime in order to take away the jumping feature. Of course, you could also just sort of activate and deactivate the jump inside the, the player controller. But another example could also be that you have a lamp and you want the lamp lighting to blink on and off then you can deactivate and activate the component that has the lighting on it. So in that sort of sense, you know, deactivating and activating components can have a lot of different usages inside your game. So just to kind of explain what I have in here, I have a square that has a rigid body 2D as well as a box collider, meaning that it is going to be falling, but it's going to stop if it hits any other game objects with a box collider. I also have two grounds, which also have a box collider 2D on top of them. So if I were to play, you can see that nothing really happens. We're just sort of gonna get stuck with the box on top of the, the grounds up there. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna go inside the scripts and using my space bar, I want to activate and deactivate the box collider of my square, meaning that if I deactivate the, the box collider, my square should fall through the ground. And then when I click again, it should reactivate so it gets stuck on the second ground down there. So currently I do have a script attached to my square, which is called test script one. And if I were to go inside my code, you can see that right now we don't really have anything. Now, the first thing I wanna do inside my script is I want to actually reference to the component that I want to enable or disable inside my Unity engine. So the first thing I'm gonna do at the top here is I'm just gonna create a empty container that is going to contain the component that I want to reference to. So in this case here, it is a box collider 2D because that's what I wanna enable and disable. And I'm just gonna go ahead and call this one C-O-L for collider. Now, if you were to call it collider, it will actually give you a little um, a, a little thing. And that's simply because we already have something inside Unity, inside the, the scripting called collider. So, you know, you could call it something like collider square, or you could just call it C-O-L. So in this case, we're just gonna do that. Uh, this is also a field. So let's make sure we do proper name conventions by creating a underscore in front of it. So I'm gonna take my box collider and just like with any other components inside scripting, when we want to grab it, we're gonna go inside our start. And I'm just simply gonna set it equal to the actual component because right now we just have an empty container, but we haven't actually grabbed the component yet. So we're gonna do that by referencing to game object, which is the current game object we were attached to. And I'm gonna say dot get components. And then we're gonna to reference to box collider 2D. Next inside the update method, I'm going to create an if statement that is going to allow for me to press a button on my keyboard to enable or disable this component on the game object. So I'm gonna create a if statement. Inside the condition, I'm gonna say input dot get key down. I'm just gonna go ahead and reference the space key. And then inside the curly brackets, I'm simply gonna say that we have our collider dot enabled. And I'm going to set it equal to either a true or false statement. In this case here, we want to deactivate it. So I'm gonna set it equal to false. And with this, if I were to go back inside my engine and just sort of test this out, if I were to press play, you can see that if I press space, it is going to fall down through the grounds because we no longer have our uh, component enabled over here. You can actually see there's this little check mark right next to the component name and currently it is turned off. If I were to do this again, just to show you, if I were to press space multiple times, it is going to remain false. It's not going to enable itself again. And if you wanna do that, we can either write you know, an, an if statement that checks for if it is already enabled or disabled or something, uh, but that would be the complicated way to do things. So instead, I'm going to say that I want to set it equal to itself, which right now is going to be true, but I want to do the opposite of itself. So this is going to be a switch instead. So when I press, it is going to turn into false, and then it's going to check next time I press the spacebar again and turn it into true, and it's gonna do that back and forward. And if I were to go in and press play, I will actually go ahead and disable it, and then once we go down below the first platform, I will enable it back on. So press space and space, and then it gets caught on the platform there. 
So this is just kind of like a cool way to do things when you want to uh, enable and disable components inside a certain game object. And it can just sort of be done so in a very simple manner. The next thing we're gonna talk about is how to activate and deactivate a game object inside our actual game. So instead of enabling and disabling a specific component on a game object, we're actually going to activate or deactivate a game object so it doesn't appear inside the scene. If you've ever seen one of those behind the scenes where you take a look at a game, you know, what is actually going on behind the scenes that you can't see as the player. In some cases, you may see something called object pulling happening in the background, which is that instead of having to instantiate a bunch of objects at some point inside the game, you know, as you're playing it, instead, what the developers might do is that they already instantiate the objects from the beginning as you load in the actual level, but the objects are deactivated underneath the scene. So when they have to use the objects, they just activate them and move them in where they need to use them, which is going to be a little bit better when it comes to performance. Another example could be if you have a boss that you kill at some point, but oh ho ho, he wasn't really dead and he reappears a minute later or something. Instead of having to destroy the boss and then reinstantiate him a minute later, you could just sort of deactivate him, move him out of the way, and then activate him again a minute later when you have to use him. Again, there's a lot of uses for activating and deactivating game objects, but it's just kind of like good to know. So with this example here, you can see that I have a square which is actually inside a square parent game object. So currently if I were to click the square here, you can see that, oh, this is actually the sprite. And I just simply created a empty game object that I placed them inside of, meaning that this is the parent of the square. And you can simply do that by create a empty game object and call it something. And then, you know, you just sort of move it in and then you have it there. So just to kind of show how you do that. Now, what I wanna do here is I wanna show you how I can activate and deactivate game objects individually but also if they're inside a parent and there's a bunch of game objects inside the parent that you want to deactivate at once and then how to reactivate them. Because let's say you have a bunch of stuff that all has to appear and disappear at the same time, then instead of doing that individually for all the game objects, you can just do that to the parent that they're all attached to. Before we get into the script, just to kind of show you how we can actually tell if a game object is active or deactive inside the scene, if you go up right next to where the name is of the, the game object that you have, you have this little check mark. And you can actually go ahead and check that off, and then you can see, oh, it deactivates all the different game objects. And because I deactivated the parent, we can also no longer see the, the child, but you'll actually notice that the child is still active up there. And that's because the child elements are not going to be deactivated, but they still will go away if we deactivate the parents. So you can see when I activate it back on, you can see we have the child element again. Um, if I were to go into the, the child, which is the square, I do the same thing. It's just going to be the square that gets deactivated. The, the parent is still active inside the scene. So you can also do that to individual childs. Before we get into the script, I also wanna mention that I have a game manager inside my scene. And I don't think we've talked about game managers before. Essentially, a game manager is a game object inside your scene that takes control over all the overall settings of your game. So all the events or things like save files that needs to carry over, controlling whether or not you're restarting the game or changing the settings of your game, like that might happen inside the game manager. So the game manager is kind of like an overall manager that handles all the big things inside your game. And just for this example here, I just chose to create a game manager to handle whether or not these objects are going to be activated or deactivated. Which simply means that I took the game manager and just simply attached my script to it. That's really all it means. The reason we don't want to attach the script to one of the game objects inside our scene that I have to activate and deactivate is because if I were to attach the script to my square, for example, and I were to deactivate the square, it means that I can no longer access the script because the game object is no longer active, which means that the script is also no longer active. So I can't reactivate the game object with that script. So we have to do that using a external game object that handles you know, the activating and deactivating objects inside my scene. So with that explanation, let's go ahead and dive into my actual script. So going back in here, I have test script number two, which has nothing inside of it. And the first thing we're going to be doing is I'm simply going to be creating two different game object containers at the top here, because I want to tell it which one of these game objects is the parent and which one is the child. So I can actually graph them and deactivate and activate them inside my scene. So I'm going to say we have a serialized field so we can actually graph them inside the inspector. And I'm going to call this one a game object type. And I'm going to call this one square parent. Then I'm going to duplicate it. 
And I'm just simply gonna name the second one square. And of course, proper naming convention, let's do an underscore here, just so we have this name properly. And then simply inside my update statement, I'm gonna do the same thing as we did in the last example. So I'm just gonna copy paste my if statement, which was getting the input key of space. I'm gonna put that inside update. We don't need to have the start function here or the start method, so I'm just gonna delete it. And instead, what I'm going to do inside the if statement is I'm going to grab one of the game objects that I want to activate or deactivate. So let's, for now, just go ahead and grab the square put it in here, say set active parentheses and set it equal to false. If I were to do that, go inside my Unity, press play. You can see once I actually press space, well right now actually nothing is gonna happen because we haven't actually attached the game object. So let's go ahead and inside the game manager over on the side here where we have the script, drag in the square into the space that it needs to be and also drag in the, the parent to where it needs to be. So we're just gonna drag them into the empty slots there. And now let's go ahead and start it again. And when I press space, you'll notice that the game object gets deactivated so we can no longer see it. And if I were to click it, you can also see that, oh, it's no longer appearing inside the inspector as active. Um, so it, it does get deactivated. And in the same sense, we could also just go ahead and do the same thing to the parent. So we're just gonna put that in instead, save it and go inside our, uh, inside our Unity, press play. And instead you're gonna see that the square parent is going to get deactivated. Another thing we can do is actually check the status to see if the game object is active or deactivated. So what I can do is I can also go ahead and debug.log just to show you. Debug.log. I'm gonna grab the game object. So in this case, it's gonna be the squared parent. I'm gonna put it in, say dot active self, which actually pops up here, which is simply going to give me a Boolean of whether or not this is going to be true or false in case of, you know, if it's actually active. So if we were to save this, I'm also gonna go ahead and comment out the set active down here, just so we only see the debug message inside the console. So if we were to press play, you can see that it is going to tell me when I press space, that right now this game object or the, the parent is currently set to true because it's active inside the scene. If I were to go ahead and uncomment, and also move my debug.log below, so we have two of them, you can see that if I were to press space inside the scene, you'll notice that it is going to go ahead and run two statements inside the console. So it's going to say true and false because we deactivated the game object in between those two debugs. And now the last thing I wanna show you is that we did talk about game objects being deactivated even though it was the parent we deactivated. So, you know, even though we deactivate the parent, the actual game object inside the parent is still set to active. The way we can check whether or not a game object is actually deactivated or if it's deactivated as part of the parent being deactivated is by going inside our code and instead of saying active self, let's go ahead and delete the first one of the debugs. And instead, I'm going to say that my parent is going to be set to false, but I want to test out whether or not my child is actually active inside the scene using the same active self. So going back inside Unity, I'm going to see whether or not it is going to tell me that the child is active. So currently when I press space, you can see that right now it's set to true. But hold on a second, we can't actually see the child inside the scene. And that's because even though, like I said, the parent has been deactivated, the child is still set to active. So how do we actually test out whether or not the child is active, like actually visible inside the scene when the parent has been deactivated? Well, we can actually do that using another little thing. So instead of saying active self, we're going to say active in hierarchy. Oh, how do you spell that? <laughs> Like so, there we go. And by using that statement instead, we can actually go in and this time, instead of saying true, this should actually give us a false because right now it is deactivated as part of the hierarchy that we have running in here. So running it, you can see it says false. And this is simply how we can test whether or not a game object is active inside the scene, you know, giving us an actual feedback to tell us if it's active. And with that said, I don't have anything else to show you today. This was a very simple lesson that for some reason took a lot longer because there's a lot of cars running outside. So, you know, it goes into the microphone. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.